Hey guys and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here we're going to do an OpenCV uh, speed and performance test. So we're going to test some of the different kind of methods and algorithms that we have uh, early implemented in some of the previous videos in this tutorial here. And then we're going to do a speed and performance test and then compare it like to Python and, and the C++ in OpenCV. So we're going to talk about like if Python is, is better or like if C++ is better in OpenCV and what are the different kind of advantages and disadvantages and when will like when will we go down on speed and performance in python compared to c++ and a lot of stuff like that so we're going to talk about that and we're going to do the speed and performance test on some different kind of methods both in c++ and python so make sure to watch this video here to the end where where so you can get like an understanding of like how OpenCV works with c++ and python um, regarding speed and performance i've also linked the discord server down in the description here so make sure to check that channel out where we talk about like a lot of different kind of stuff about computer vision artificial intelligence deep learning and a lot of other different kind of stuff and if also if you have a project where it has some problems you can go ask them in there or if you just want some inspiration for your projects feel free to join that server and, and chat with us so we'll start in sublime text here where we're going to talk, uh, talk about like the speed and performance of the different kind of methods and algorithms in python first and then we're going to do it in c++ the exact same thing and then we're going to talk, going to compare like how OpenCV works with python and c++ and if you can work uh, like if you can use python just as you can op uh, use OpenCV and with the c++ and then we're going to talk about like when is c++ better to use than, than python and i'm going to show you some different kind of examples of uh, when that exactly is the case but first of all here we're going to use the, the first method that we're going to test is the background subtraction that we talked about in one of the previous videos so we're just going to, to use some of the different kind of methods and algorithms that we have already used in the previous videos. And then we're going to compare those here in OpenCV with both Python and C++. Then we're also going to, do, going to do the hard casket face detection to see like, so we're going to, the way we're going to do the test here is that we're going to take like a number of frames. So we're going to take a number of frames and then we're going to calculate the FPS for each of those frames. And then um, we're going at the end, we're going to take the average of those frames. So we're getting the actual, like the, the average uh, frames per second that we get by running these algorithms here uh, through the images that we're going to do and then we can compare those results in C++ and uh, in Python with using OpenCV. So we're going to do a hard cascade face detecting uh, detection here as well where we just here we're just going to load it in uh, as usual as, as, as I showed you in, in one of the previous videos in the tutorial and then we're going to have this function here where we're just going to pass in the frame here and then we're going to detect the faces here by just calling this uh, face uh, cascade detect multi scale here, uh, which will actually like store the faces that we're detecting here in this faces variable. And then we can just down here, we can just have a for loop that runs through the x, y, uh, the width and the height of the boundary boxes or like the, the, the frame around uh, the detected faces that were detected with uh, the hard cascade classifier. And then we're just going to draw an ellipse around, uh, around that face that we detected in the image. So we're going to do the exact same thing in, in C++, but I'll just go through it here and, and what we're going to do here in Python. And then it will be exact the same thing in, in, in C++. So then we're also going to have the background subtraction here where we just like call this function here, uh, background dot, dot apply. So we're loading in uh, the background and then we're subtracting your background from this frame that we're passing in here, uh, here. And then we'll get the, the foreground mask. And then we're doing some morphology uh, morphology operations down here to pre-process this image uh, even more to get a, a better foreground mask here and get a better result when we're sub subtracting the background. Then we're just going to return the foreground mask here. And then I'm also going to have a for loop here, like some kind of like uh, dummy dummy function here that we're going to run as well together with the algorithms to see like how how writing your own code in Python and how writing, writing your own code in, in, C, uh, in, in C++ actually like affects the, the performance and the speed of running the different kind of algorithms and applications in OpenCV because it really it really uh, depends on what programming language you're in. Uh, if you want to write your own code together with the algorithms, or if you have your own algorithm that you want to to apply to some of the other algorithms in OpenCV, then we're going to see like how that uh, how that affects the speed and performance uh, by running if like for loops, for example, in both OpenCV with Python and C++ and see the differences of those two. So that, that's why I have this function here, run the for loop here, where we just have, uh, where we're just running uh, two for loops here over n times here that we pass as a parameter. And then we're going to open up the camera here as, as usual. And then we can actually like get the FPS from the camera here with this, uh, with this function here, video.get uh, cap prop FPS here. So we'll get the, the number of frames, like the maximum number of frames that we can get from the camera. And then we're just going to print that out. 
and then here we're going to specify the number of frames that we're actually like going to to take in do the operations on and then we're going to take the average um, of like the, the number of frames per uh, like the, the number of frames per second that we get from these frames here that we're running through and then we're just going to print that out that we're running 120 frames out uh, we're running 120 frames and then we're going to start the time here for actually like timing uh, the performance and the algorithm to see like how many frames that we actually get per, per second and then we're grabbing all these frames here uh, one by one uh, until we get to 120 and then we'll just read in uh, the, the frames here from the from the camera and store it in this frame variable and then we can actually like just apply background subtraction and face detection and run this for loop function down here in this uh, in this for loop here where we're running through all the frames so we will do uh, we will perform all of these different kind of methods or algorithms here on the frames that we pass in here so we're going to test these three different kind of like uh, methods here. First of all, we're going to do the like detect the detect the faces and see like how many frames per seconds do we get. And then we're going to do the background subtraction method that we already went over in, in one of the previous videos. And then we're going to run the for loop here together with different kind of um, method here uh, with a varying in here. So we can see like how, how it affects our program and the number of frames per seconds that we get by writing our own code and our own uh, like algorithms in OpenCV and C++ and Python. And then we're just going to end the time here uh, as I showed you in the last video like how we can actually like calculate the, uh, the number uh, like the frames per second in an open CV or like in a computer vision uh, uh, task or just in any other task and then we're just going to take the seconds here that it took to run all of these frames here um, um, in total and then we're going to subtract here and uh, subtract that by the start uh, time and then we can actually just um, take the number of frames and then divide it by the seconds and then we'll get the number of like the estimated frames per second that we get averaging over like the 120 frames and that will be like the estimated frames per second that we get for each of uh, like for, for like each like how many frames we get per second in our application or project so we're now set up the, uh, the camera for the program here and the first program here that we're going to run and the first method that we're going to test is this uh, detect and display phases so we're going to use the hard cascade uh, phase uh, classifier to actually like detect phases in the frames that we get in from the camera so if I control B here, it will now run the face detection on 120 frames and we can see down here that we get like the number of frames per, uh, per second from our camera, which is 30. And then we're going to capture 120 frames down here and we can see that it took uh, 5.1 seconds to run all of these 120 frames here uh, through. And then we can see we get an estimated frames per second here of uh, 23 by only running this uh, detect and display, um, display phases here uh, function here, which is the hard cascade classifier. So we're now jumped into Visual Studio here and I'm going to do the exact same thing here in, in C++ as we just did in Python to, to compare like how the performance and speed is uh, in Python compared to C++. So all these functions here are the exact same methods and, and functions that gets called from uh, from OpenCV. So both the, like fall here and the face detection and also uh, the background subtraction is the exact same thing. So I won't go more into details uh, with the implementation of those. <clears throat> but if we go down here to the main function here, uh, we're actually like going to do the exact thing, same thing here where we're going to run over a number of frames and then we can actually like uh, detect, run this uh, face detection here which is going to call the hard cascade uh, classifier. So if I run the program here it will do the exact same things here as in, uh, as in Python it will call the same methods and stuff like that. But in this case here with OpenCV when we're calling like uh, the face detection algorithm it actually it, like takes longer uh, to actually like do the face detection that, than, that, that it does in, in Python. And it might be because like the way it loads in like the hard, uh, hard cascade classifier, like uh, the file, the XML file, but I don't really know like what causes the problem because we can see here that we only get an estimated frames per second um, of seven compared to we get, we got like a 23 um, inside of, inside of Python where it was calling the same exact same methods and functions from OpenCV. So I don't, don't really know like what's causing this a huge decrease in the performance and speed when we're doing face uh, face detection. But for all of the other different kind of methods that we're going to uh, to compare, it's either the same or C++ is actually better. So if you know the solution to this one here and you know like why this face detection with hard cascade classifier is actually like way worse here in C++ compared to Python, uh, make sure to drop it down in the comment. I, I really wanted to know. So if we go back here to Sublime Text, we can now go in here and test like how this background subtraction here works. So I'll just come this background subtraction on, uh, in here again. And if, if I then run the program here um, again, we will get in the 120 frames and then we'll take the average of those. 
and then calculate the estimated uh, frames per second. And we can see here that we again get 24 uh, frames per second when we're running this background subtraction algorithm here. So it doesn't really matter, like it doesn't really decrease our performance that much by running uh, both the face detection and the background subtract subtraction here um, in OpenCV with Python. So we're going to Visual Studio here again and do the exact same thing uh, with the background subtraction. Um, then we just comment this in here and then we're going to do this background subtraction here on the frame. Um, and if we're going to run the program here, we will again load into 120 frames, get the estimated frame per second. And we can actually see here that the performance is, is similar when this program here is done running. So we can see that we get an estimated frame per second of, of 24 in this case here. So this is exactly the same thing as we got in Python. Uh, which is which is really good and makes sense because like it's just calling like in Python it just calls the same exact same things or like the same the same uh, methods which is implemented in in uh, in C plus plus in Python. So if you're only using um, the OpenCV functions and methods in Python, then the performance and efficiency is actually like exactly the same as in C plus plus. But if you're going here again to Python, I'll, I want to show you like how it affects the program when we're running our own code and we're writing our own algorithms. Um, together in in like in code and we're using for loops writing our own algorithms and how that affects um, and how that affects the frame per second and efficiency and performance of the like the whole program or application so here if we're going to do this background subtraction here and we're going to run this for loop here uh, where we pass in this number here like a thousand so we run the two for loops through a thousand times each so if I run the program here now with this for loop here which is could be like um, our own algorithm together with the background subtraction here. Then we'll do the same exact things, uh, same exact things here. But we can see that um, in actual like in Python, we'll get way worse performance when we're writing our own code, we're writing our own for loops and stuff like that uh, together with the method from OpenCV. And in this case here, when we're running the background subtraction and the for loop here, we can see we're actually like hopping uh, the frames per seconds that we get by running this for loop here. Uh, with an n of a thousand, so we get 12 frames per second here um, as an estimate for running these 120 frames here uh, through. So we can see that this is a very huge uh, decrease in performance in Python when we, have, when, we, when we are writing our own algorithms and we're writing our own code um, in Python because now we are, we are actually like depending on Python where if you're just calling the functions and methods from OpenCV those are actually implemented in C++ and then those functions will just call a code that is implemented in C++ and that will increase the performance or like actually like get the exact same performance as we were to wrote our program in C++. So if we're going here to, to Visual Studio here again and we're going to do this run the follow up here again with this, uh, with this number of thousand elements here or like uh, n, n equals a thousand and we run the program here again, then we can actually see it doesn't really decrease our performance that much, or at least not as, as much as in Python. And that makes really good sense because like uh, C++ is just way better to like handling like uh, for loops and stuff like that because it's a compiled language. And we can actually like see by running this for loop here, it doesn't affect our algorithm or it doesn't affect our like a program or applications uh, at all. We get the exact same estimated frames per second here, which is 24. And we got the exact same, exact same frame per second if we, if we weren't running this for loop here, um, here as well, or like actually like running our own algorithms and methods here on the images. Uh, it could be on the images uh, as well, or some other different kind of things. So if you try to increase it here to 10,000, we can actually and run the program here again. Then it, it just affects the, the program even more, um, but it doesn't really affect it that much. And if I were to run this for loop here with 10,000 elements here, or n equals to 10,000 in in Python, it would actually like just uh, crash the program. It couldn't run because the elements were just too big, and it couldn't load in any frames or do the actual like um, operations in time. So that that wouldn't even uh, be running in Python if we if we had like some algorithm with this time complexity here or like this just just this complexity here of the algorithm. But it, here in C++ we can actually like implement our own code together together with the functions from OpenCV, we could do our own methods on the images. We can run for loop through the images if we're using uh, OpenCV with C++. And if we're using OpenCV with Python, like we can only use the different kind of functions in Python or use other frameworks uh, that is actually like implemented in C++. If we, if we really want like a real time application, like, and we need this time and efficiency or and like speed here, uh, that we get from C++, then it is necessary to use C++ in your application compared to Python. Unless if you're just going to like make a simple application where you call the different kind of methods 
from C++, then it's totally fine and you'll get the exact same performance and speed as in C++. So we can see here that we get an estimated frames per, uh, per second here of four. So it's still very low, but this program here couldn't run in, in Python uh, with OpenCV here when we're writing our own for loops in, in Python. So that's pretty much it for this video here, guys. We're going over like uh, the test and the uh, test of the performance in OpenCV with both C++ and Python, and then we compare like how the performance and speed is compared to these, uh, those two languages. And we also talk about like when should we use C++ and when should we use Python for our applications. And if you're just using if you're just using the functions from OpenCV, it doesn't really matter if you're using C++ or Python, but if you're going to create an, like a larger or more complex application where you're going to write your own code and your own for loops and not depending on any other libraries or modules, then you'll ne then it's necessary to use C++ if you want some real-time uh, application or you like at least you want uh, a couple of frames per second. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video here and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I'm currently doing a, a deep learning tutorial with neural networks where we're currently talking about convolutional neural networks. Uh, we've been going over like the basic different kind of stuff that, that is going on in convolutional neural networks and how they work. And then later on, we're going to like actually like create our own neural networks, uh, both convolutional neural networks and artificial neural networks, uh, create our own data set and use some data, different kind of data sets and then train our neural networks on, on those data sets. And then we're actually going to make predictions on data that the neural networks hasn't seen before. And then we're going to evaluate the algorithm and talk about like how we can optimize it and fine tune our neural networks. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here uh, or else I'll just see you next video, guys. Bye for now.